Hello, I'd like to provide some feedback about your comments in the discussion board on chapters three and four. I intended to leave individual comments to everyone. If you don't see an individual comment from me, it wasn't your fault. I made a mistake. Going the extra mile. I think that's really important in what we do in our lives. Going the extra mile means delivering more than you've been asked to deliver. That, in turn, will build trust and a high trust organization. An example is that my wife was asked uh, to give her recommendations for a particular course that the university was thinking of proposing. She went the extra mile and created a spreadsheet of 10 major universities and related courses and their objectives in her analysis of what we should do. That was an example of going the extra mile. Face-to-face -face students often ask for extra credit and I say I don't give extra credit because at least in my baby boomer life, I had to go the extra mile in every job I ever had in order to keep the job. It's just the expectation. Secondly, a couple of concepts on the five key drivers of organizational trust. One of the drivers was employee concern, showing your concern for the employees. Our new president at Fort Hayes State University, Dr. Martin, Myrta Martin, is always saying, we're a family, I care. And she lives up to those words. The employee feeling like they are important is an important part of staying with a business. So managers should say, good job. Well done. Thank you. A second item of these um, drivers of organizational trust is transparency. People should know why the business is doing what it's doing. Not just getting an email, but actually having organizational meetings, Q&A sessions, brown bag lunches. People, when they know what's going on, will trust you. Thirdly, tied closely, reliability. You have to do what you say you will do. If you don't have an answer, say, I don't know, but I'll get back to you. And the key is, get back to them with the answer. Finally, a driver is competence, and a business maintains competence through providing training for employees to fill uh, skill gaps. Another individual talked about uh, television journalism and the pace of technological change and unionization. Yes, I believe that Technology is the main driver of change throughout history, from sandals to shoes to country western boots, and I'm a Texan. But also, within a unionized environment, the old order was us versus them. And I was very lucky in Shell to work directly for an HR manager that wasn't of the old order. The plant manager was. But David wasn't. He taught me that to get out, walk the plant, talk with the operators and with union leadership and get to know them on a personal basis. And we really didn't have a lot of issues. Finally, Franz uh, Tropiner's definition of culture as the way in which a group of people solves problems and resolves dilemmas. Now, I provided you a link 
on YouTube below this video and on the uh, announcements and email to listen to this Dutch gentleman who is now a consultant talk about his cultural structure. He tells us that basic assumptions become the norm. Basic assumptions become the norm. And he works through his uh, bottle by talking about cultures that have rules with no exception, that are very structured and want standardization versus those that are more flexible. Now, Royal Dutch Shell is owned by the Dutch. They want everything standardized. You go from plant A to plant B, office Z to office D, country in Africa, country in Asia, all the processes are the same, just like the U.S. State Department. Secondly, and, and this drives somebody else's point that there are subcultures within a business at different sites, and that is true, but they'll still be using the same business processes, I think. Consensus in groups versus individual decision-making. Indonesia, when I worked for an oil company there, very group-oriented, much discussion before anything happened. Versus, you know, in America, we're pretty much individualistic. That's how we like to think of ourselves. Uh, there are cultures that don't show emotion. British stiff upper lip versus those that do. Then there are cultures that put their emphasis on achievement, like America, versus those cultures where it depends on what social stratus you were born in, which is very British. Finally, someone pointed out that in their office, they hear everything secondhand through a memo or word of mouth. And that is not a good way of doing things. I'll be making some videos on the development of the communication plan and the, and the tools and processes that that involved based on a request from one of our classmates. Well, I hope this is giving you some food for thought. See you later on.